Welcome back, everyone, to The Fire Rises, my Fire of Iron 4. I'm your host, Mr. Uh, Joe Biden Lover. Uh, as present as last year's calendar. It is currently March 15th, 2025, and everyone getting everyone on the job. Hello, Philadelphia. This is a city of brotherly love, and for the longest time, it was a titan of American industry. That fell away for a while, but now it's coming back, and it's going to be better than ever. This war has proven that many of the priorities of past governments have been exactly backward. Thinking our enemies were abroad and not domestic, thinking industry could just be sent overseas without consequences, and thinking America can stomach unemployment. No! This country was built so every man could pursue happiness. How can you be happy if you can't work? Work. That was a mistake of the old, and I wish we didn't have to have a civil war to get through that through the DC heads, but at least we were making progress. This country needs to produce bombs and tanks for now, but when this all ends, well, well, well sorry, we'll start building back better than ever. Our country will be the giant of world industry again. We'll treat unemployment like the COVID-19 pandemic, a virus, a disease that needs to be eradicated. We'll get every man and woman to work and make sure they get the child care and financial help they need to raise their families. We'll put America back to work. And then, corporations suspected of illegal activity. It was a late Saturday on CNN, and a scheduled interview between Chris Wallace and Josh Bourbon, an attendee of a recent meeting between the government and the various corporations operating in its territory. So Josh, we've heard rumors that you, you have something to say about the recent meeting you've attended with corporations. Are these rumors true? Yes, Chris, they are. I have to admit, when I came to the interview today, I didn't know what I wanted to say. But then I realized that people need to know the truth, and the truth is that many of the corporations that attended the meeting, if they were countries, they'd be on trial for crimes against humanity. Well, Josh, that's a very strong opinion. Do you mind delving a bit deeper into this claim? I'm sure the audience would like to know more. Yes, Chris, I will. When I attended, I was given some needed to know information to bargain with a spokesperson of the corporation. And let me just say, these things are cor these corporations have done to their workers, local landowners, and small businesses is outright authoritarian, and they need to be punished immediately. Okay, Josh, do you know if you'll be silenced for exposing these things? I mean, you said their actions were outright authoritarian. I'm not sure what I... I'm not sure, but what I do know is that they will keep on doing things until actions are taken against them. So I plead with, to the government to do something about this. Just another paranoid conspiracy theorist. Open investigation, Mr. Bloomberg. Yeah, I guess we're going to go that route. So... Like I said last time, uh, I redid this and I beelined basically through as much as I can, stacking more soldiers on, this, on the front line against the Patriot front and just pushing into them, which capitulate them. There's no special event or anything like that, which kind of sucks, but we pushed with them. Still cleaning up uh, uh, West Virginia. And with, when the Patriot front collapsed, I sent all the rest of the forces west and we just smoked through Trump's you know, divisions and whatnot. So it was an easy breakthrough through Kansas down to Oklahoma City, just breaking through all of these plain states. And then, as you can see, we, we ended up here, and we finished off a lot of the divisions that were up here in Wisconsin. It's kind of a weird thing to think about that they all died in Wisconsin, but that's all right. Um, that being said, we're now getting ready for these guys on this front, um, and I'm hoping we can deliver a relatively quick blow to these guys um, once they start going to war with us, of course. Uh, another spy? Yeah. That'd be great. So we do want to finish off Trump here in this campaign. And we will probably in this episode. It's pretty close to dying. Um, so, and we're actually upgrading our intelligence agency, which I forgot to last time. We've got it. we're working on some uh, radar here, which will definitely help us out. Um, as much as I would love Denver, I'm still holding out. Oh, hello. Appalachian insurgency crushed. Well, what the barnacles happened here? What the flip? What did I select? Oh, you guys. Well, you got nothing else to do. Recent reports tell. Of resounding success eastwards as our forces crush remnants of the Appalachian insurgency geared toward Trump's government in Denver. This insurgency had been a thorn in our side, striking supply lines and railway networks leading to the front line in the Midwest. They also diverted serious effort and resources from the front lines in the West, allowing for the constitutionalist traders to halt our advance. Reports also detail the destruction of our 50 terrorist cells in West Virginia and recent offensives by specialized counterinsurgency brigades, paralyzing any potential enemy action in the region for the time being and securing local interests. It's also a huge propaganda victory, as our troops are shown to be the most refined and especially trained in the world for these types of operations, and no matter what the egomaniac in Denver does, our democracy will remain firm. Precisely executing operations such as the assassination of insurgency leaders hiding in the region, as well as the encirclement and destruction of insurgency brigades utilizing superior firepower, have shattered the resistance. Suppression of insurgency allows for significant reallocation of military resources, as counterinsurgent brigades previously engaged in the Appalachians are freed up to reinforce the front lines against a broader threat westwards. We should begin efforts to rebuild local infrastructure, to win over the local hearts and minds, preventing any seditious ideologies from resurging. This should also remain a strong presence in the region, as such, an executive order maintaining martial law has been extended, giving us more time to clear our hideouts, trial the traitors, and ensure lasting stability. The boots of democracy will stamp out these snakes whenever they appear, preventing them from poisoning the people with their populist venom. The Union forever. Well, I'm glad I had all these garrison soldiers all around here. 
All right, so what do we got next? Egyptian drought. Oh, Wisconsin, West Virginia. Yeah, we gotta finish these guys off. That's all right. <clears throat> At least in this case, we're ready for the, the Nazis. Should be fine here once we wrap around them. Good, 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 good. <coughs> Not sure how they did this, but progressive proposed social spending. Uh, that's fine, whatever. Yeah, as you can see, I'm really not focused on attacking whatsoever. Um, I mean, could you attack here, maybe? Maybe? A chance? Perhaps. Cool. Good job, good job, good job. Y'all get in there. Nice. Overall, not bad. And when we capitulate them, we actually took a lot of territory away from them, too, so we need more what? Attack aircraft and multi roll airframes. We don't have enough of anything here, but that's pretty normal. Alright, so with that done and dusted, um, you know what? I'm going to put you guys down here. So now we're ready for them to assault us. Lobby for more progressive support. Um. It's gonna become blank as well, but whatever. That's what it is. Oh, we actually have planes in reserve now. Look at that. Great. A couple more of you guys will be very beneficial in Greensboro. Mexico is becoming slightly more united. And are they gonna go into war with us or nah? Breakthrough. Yeah, it's fine. Um, no, you can go here too, anyways, but that's fine. Like last time, uh, modern security. Let's go with tough security. Oh, you are attacking there, huh? Can we help them out? Letting those tanks lead. <clears throat> Emergency factory retooling. Across the territory, dozens of factories left derelict after years of neglect continue to hollow both their civilian and war economies. To begin the revitalization of the war machine and the civilian industry, you must begin the retooling and redevelopment of abandoned armaments, factories, mills, power plants, refiners, and coal breakers, and steel mills. And reinvigorating economic output and we're bringing in thousands of new jobs. That'd be great. Expanding your reach. Free trade. Expanded resources. Well, we went right earlier. I'm going to go right again. Our efforts towards economic self reliance have seen great results thus far in a manner previously unthinkable for the 21st century America. We've had taken in more our resilience and strive, where the industry is producing more and more of the goods and supplies needed for this war's conclusion. As the production continues to grow in scale and magnitude, as does our need for materials necessary to make it happen, in order to keep up with the demands of the war machine and the public apparatus, we begin a mass acquisition of the required resources. With a number of available steel mills and other similar factories or facilities, increasing the capacity to produce what we need very much. Like that, we actually pushed in. Denver, Fort Collins. All right, need all that to go. Um, I really don't want to fight these guys here. I really don't. Just get to Cheyenne if we can, which we should be able to do fine. As soon as I move, these guys are going to start attacking us, I bet. Because we've got to start attacking him here, too. Get to the Rockies. Somewhere in East Africa. Oh, he's actually pushing Look at that. Take special forces into that. we got to beat up the artillery division. I got you. Let's see what you can do. Come on, now we're ready for you. Texas is doing okay. It's fine. Whatever. Getting closer and closer and closer. Uh, drill. Uh, girls drill. <clears throat> When I was a boy, American industry was driving the Nazi government to the grave. When I was a teenager, the envy of the world, 
When I first became a senator, it was still chugging along, but cracks were showing. Now I stand, I stand in a nation that produces little of the products it consumes. Now I stand, uh, barely feed the fires of, of the global pandemic and war. Well, I've endeavored to fix this. It doesn't start with building factories. It begins here, in a good old-fashioned mine. You are getting the raw materials now for foreign export for more, before our nation's survival. While maybe be seem a bit of my era, this new mine will be a wellspring for thousands of jobs and more, all of which will contribute to this war effort. When we are triumphant, it will be continue operations, I promise. With your uh, labor will dispose the town in Denver and the communists and Nazi regimes. You will, you will, uh, <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yep, yep. I kind of doubt we can actually take Denver right now. It's so hard to see, too. You might be able to do something there, maybe. Kind of doubt it. But we'll see. Did you guys get up here, too? There you are. There you are. Go in. See what you can do. Little spending bill. Not bad, not bad. Unarmed drones. Are we actually using unarmed drones at all? I'm not sure. I'm not gonna use them for now, I guess. It's fine. Whatever. Oh! Battle of Denver. I got legitimacy. Can we actually take everything? That's probably really bad. Denver secured. To do. One nation united. Oh, look at that. Alright, so you guys are all doing this stuff. You got one heck of a front against these guys. So then you guys are down there. You guys are there. You guys are there. You guys should really be pushed here. And I'm going to focus on the north as much as we possibly can for now. Uh huh. Well, we got rid of that guy. We need to reintegrate a lot of states now. Second American Civil War. Reading for the nation. Holy crap, we got some new stuff here. That's cool. Supercharged war machine. Well, I guess. We could. We don't have to. This is new stuff, though. I do like this stuff. End the traitors. Demolish gorillas. I like that. Even though many of our enemies have been annihilated on the battlefield, there are those still who refuse to capitulate even in the face of destruction. Those who have failed to best us in open combat have either fled to remote areas or urban underground in the hopes of thwarting our efforts to restore order, carrying out ambushes, acts of sabotage, and other desperate attempts at holding out against the inevitable. In addition to this, the irritating persistence stands as a half-hearted sign of the opposing population that the war is somehow not yet lost despite the very obvious lack of open warfare taking place. With these resistance efforts providing to be a thorn in our side, it's time to ramp up the pressure, increasing anti guerrilla operations will be put into effort and are put into effect. And sweeping attacks will be carried out on known resistance hotspots, effectively destroying the feudal intent to bring about a late victory. Good emergency presidential powers. Maintain constitutionalism. The second great society. That's kinda cool. The New Green Deal. Expand social security. High welfare benefits. Weekly stability one. Oh, that's not bad, too. Um, now that we are victorious of the traders in Denver, we must begin revitalizing public welfare and some of the programs. We'll greatly expand Social Security, allocating funds from a war economy, payroll taxes that allow us to re gradually demobilize, eliminate poverty, control crime, crime rates, rebuild regions engulfed by the war, and slowly rebuild the Great Society. Overturn Citizens United. Oh. Citizens United versus Federal Election Commission is a ruling by the Supreme Court that allows the businesses to endorse fund and electioneer presidential candidates as well as politicians on a gubernatorial or local level. It's only for them bold at corrupt corporations to engage in politics, securing the interests of cosmopolitan lobbyists and special interest groups. As a nation, we must reject the meddling of businesses within politics and that this decision is a travesty which must be overturned as soon as possible. We have an embargo by the Repu Federal Republic of Ethiopia. Okay, well, I guess we're going in, y'all. Wait, where's my guys here? Oh, they're still here. Have you learned anything here else? No? Okay. Well, we still raised militias there. Alright, Yaki, do your thing. Hmm. 
I hope we went here and there, but we'll definitely do the best we can. Republic of Korea, the Netherlands. About right then. Odd, but okay. The diesel experiments, that's fine. We need quite a bit of political power now, too. Oh, sure. Expand social security first. That'd be good. Poverty development increases, very good. Surprise, Ottoman Balkan divisions have not decided to go to war with us. Belarus unifies with Russia. We're doing quite well here, aren't we? Oh, they're really cut off there. Okay, go to Spokane then. Get to Seattle then. If you can get all the way to Seattle, that'd be fantastic. What is going on in Europe? The Russian Federation has formed um, in a collective security treaty organization. Oh, CSTO, so it's like ours. Is this NATO? North Atlantic Treaty Organization? Ah, and the UK's eating it. Recon company twos, uh, maintenance, sure. Bro, you are almost in, you made it all the way to frickin' Seattle. Jesus. Okay, well, I guess I'm gonna say we haven't pinned down so hard this time that they can't do very much. Of course, they're also trying to beat the Texas up, and they're doing quite a good job against Texas. I'm not gonna lie, that's, they're doing a very good job against them. We get really good mission. Um. Yeah, we must have started reintegrating places too. That's probably a smart idea. Alright, so we gotta concentrate these guys here. Give us the best shot possible to do well. Honestly, um, I still wanna kinda have a West Coast drive. Not sure it would be really worth it. We'll see. Don't lose Texas. You cannot lose Texas. I just said you can't lose Texas. Portion of you all. There you go. Good. We got another bit of here. Great. <clears throat> One heck of a really expanded thing here. Against these guys. Introduce the public option. Add public option healthcare plan. Interesting. Well, we're going to end the traders, but we're going to go with demolish gorillas. Good. Even more divisions if we can. So far, seems to be doing okay. Go in. We got to drive. Joe Biden's off the creases. As of late, it has become highly apparent to the president, staffers, and cabinet that his health has taken a turn for the worse in recent days. The president has been sick, stricken with illness, showing signs of feverish symptoms and increased difficulty with everyday tasks to the point where he has required an aid several times over. His pale complexion and general physical weakness have uh, been accompanied with vomiting, disorientation, and a lack of desire to eat much of anything. As such, there are now a number of medical staff kept close to President Biden in order to ensure his continued treatment as he carries out his duties despite the increased difficulty of doing so. While the president claims it's nothing more than a seasonal flu affecting him, few within his staff believe that's the only factor. We need to keep a very close eye on him now. Yeah. Battle of Portland. You're worried about this, please go ahead. Oh, they also declared war on the Ottenbaufen divisions, which is actually probably pretty good for us, too. Island. You know what? We're not winning in a lot of places, but we're winning in the North Pacific Northwest, so I'm kind of okay with it. We're doing better than I thought we would overall. All right. So at this point, I think you just can. Let these guys deal with it for now. Medvedev's speech. Oh, that's not good. Uh, 
less influence. Get more influence. Hello. A little bit of lag here and there. Alright, so after this, we're going to demolish gorillas. Look at this. It's not bad. Tough security with heavy security. Starting compliance gear sounds. Gage NSA. If there's one aspect of wartime intelligentsia that's become especially crucial during this conflict, it'd be knowing who the enemy is and what the patterns are. In the cities and towns across the country, those with sympathies to radical groups and opposing governments remain ever present and capable of subverting our efforts by offering aid to the very groups who seek nothing more than to destroy hundreds of years of sacred political tradition. Just as they did during the War of Terror, the National Security Agency has been hard at work in their attempts to better track potential threats to the Union citizens and their efforts to restore democracy nationwide. And with the recent progress, it's time that they be given a greater role in carrying this task out. Public surveillance shall be increased, and more clandestine methods of acquiring information once again be put into place in order to better sniff out those with plans to act against the government. Of course, those with nothing to hide will have nothing to fear from our protective gaze. Could if I wrote be way different. Good. Good, alright, so now we're going to stop our text for now. Any other upgrades to that is very good. Very, very good to get. Uh, get Massachusetts. Get the mass holes going. Alright, so where else would be good? Right here she looks like it would be a pretty ideal place. Let them attack us. Oh, we got us. Holy. Okay, never mind. This is really bad. This is mega bad. Oh crap, they're going to really just destroy these divisions, aren't they? And force the fence in. Yeah, that's really, 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 really bad. My bad. My bad. Yeah, they did kill them all off. Oopsie. Well, can you hurry up and get down there? I mean, I don't know why you're taking so freaking long. You know what? We're gonna do center line around here, then. That can blow will be very beneficial. And we have a very thin line. Do we have anyone else we could call upon here? Not really. We're pretty thinned out at this point. Actually, I don't need you here anymore. So yeah, we can throw you here now too. No, I said. Join the group. Go. Oh, that's fine, whatever. It's fine, whatever. Oh god, this is tough. Expand the FBI, expand the CIA, and the traitors. The Denver's government's failure to uproot centuries of democratic tradition has become their undoing. Having entered into this fight destined to experience a taste of unrelenting defeat at the hands of a proper military, many have turned tail and fled with every advancement we have made. With those who have now perished or surrendered, having found themselves deep in our territory, rather than making the sensible decision or recognizing that the war is likely over for them, they foolishly decided to continue fighting against us, attacking garrisons, fortifications, and continue to wait for relief that will never, likely never come. In regards to the dedication to the wrong side, we have no use for strong enemy militias presiding in recently captured territory. Let's put an end to these stubborn holdouts. Alright, so they're actually swallowing us here, which is not good. Man, this is really tough. Of course, they have Chinese soldiers here, too. Of course, they would sign with the Chinese. Traders and all. Alright, so at this point, I'm, we got some of the other armor in. We're going to Kansas here. The Reds. Of course, the Reds would be very tough. Uh, we're going to do New York City. We lost what? 115,000? How have we lost that many? Oh, we got in circle. That's right. <clears throat> Don't tell me we just got all these guys in circle for no freaking reason. Are you freaking kidding me? Alright, we're going in then. Robotics is logistics. It's good. You're going into. Let's 
I guess we have to circle one division here. Two million manpower. Absolutely insane. <clears throat> oh, what's we got? Ne neutrality is complicity. When the fighting erupted across the country, a number of state governments declared neutrality in the fight between us and the constitutionalists, largely due to them being preoccupied with sweeping insurrections of their own. As it stands, many of these governments have un unfortunately been overrun by the very groups they attempted to crush in their infancy, leaving their officials dead or fleeing for their lives, with the age-old state and local authorities tumbling into dissolution at the hands of radical dissidents. Despite the task proving too difficult for many governors to handle, there still remains a number of outlying states and command centers that have managed to defeat or otherwise hold out against their respective enemies. In order to reconnect with isolated government officials, we must immediately begin contacting and sending out directives to the ones that still persist, and demand they join forces under the banner of the Union once again. Although the hesitancy to commit to the rest of the nation was understandable at the time, there's no longer an excuse for offense sitting in a time like this, they're either with us or against us. Oh, let's see. Companies. Mammoth brought back from extinction. That's cool. Embargoed again. Well, at least with the armor, we can actually do something here. Up in the north, not so much, but with us crushing through Texas, that's pretty good. The neutral, the criminals. There's no man worse than who he said who he ah, he who will stand by and that it will be done. For so many Americans who endure daily the deprivations afflicted by this horrible war and the tyranny of the man responsible for it, the idea that one can be neutral is absurd. You either are a servant of a tyrant or a democratic man. There's no in between. So many pundits want us to treat our would-be king with kid gloves. They think it'd be sa satiated if we just feed the menace for a bit. Wrong. It'll keep coming back, and the zealotry that defines the Denver government will permanently affect our country. We cannot act like this is a war between two similar factions. There's a conflict between each whole hatred and fear on one side, and good love and hope on the other. There's no third way, no rising above. This is a war for democracy, rights, and future. And this uh, war will, well, not all wars. I mean, so I'm sorry, I forgot what I was saying. Wait, Biden resigns. Crush the rebels. Expand the FBI. During the period leading up to the Civil War, the Federal Bureau of Investigations quickly became one of the busiest and most active agencies in recent memory. With the outbreak increase in terror bombing shootings and targeted assassination attempts and other politically motivated acts of violence before, during, and after the election, it was rare to see an incident in which the Bureau was not present in its aftermath. The FBI has largely continued and adapted its duties throughout the war, seeing its new role not just to investigate federal crimes, but as federal police altogether keeping the peace in sensitive areas alongside local authorities, and dealing with enforcement of federal laws and directives. With the newfound applications, it's important that they receive the right amount of support as their area of operations continues to grow, especially with the sharp rise in criminal activity throughout the Union. It's only fitting that their funding be increased, ensuring that they have what they need to maintain law and order at home. So, are we missing anything here as we're trying to drive more, more, way more planes? Yeah, planes are the biggest thing for us. Artillery's not looking good. Artie. I'll go with that. Uh... You know what? We need every available resource we can get, so take whatever we can. Now, I don't want the fight to be too harsh here. I do want to cut off as many divisions in Texas as possible, so I want you to beeline all the way down here to El Paso. That's your goal. 
Who else is this other line here? No, well, regardless, that line's gone. Where are you at? Ah. Need to get Montana. Seven volunteers? Yeah, I'll take that. They are spreading badly through here, which is really not good. And we're doing very well right here, but now we got to come back through here and deliver some more damage. Hopefully. Because this is a pain in the butt, my god. Very good. Oh, and we just broke, we literally just broke through all these lines. Yeah, they, they completely undefended this. Then we'll be able to snipe these guys off too here. Synthetic refineries, very good, very good, very good. Get through, you know, get, get El Paso. Your goal is to literally just go through all the way through here and just kill them all off. Screw the Chinese. Ah, look at that. Yes, please. Good. The Texas front. It's fine, whatever. I don't care at this point. How's Joe Biden's health? I don't understand why you're not winning. We should have air superiority here. Okay, no, they have infinite planes, so I'm going to do some funky stuff then to make sure that we can actually win. Because the AI has just made too many planes, there's nothing you can do about it. Which really freaking sucks. Crush Rebels. As much as we'd hope the Civil War will be limited to ourselves and the Trump government of the West, th that has since now turned out to be the nothing more than wishful thinking. The fracturing of our society has permeated deep into the hearts and minds of millions of Americans, and many have turned away from democracy towards radicalism and extremism. In the case of initial collapse and the fighting that occurred within outlying regions, a number of the groups that sue or saw newfound popularity before the war managed to capture and occupy worrying amounts of territory, from secessionist rebels seeking to break away from the banner of the Union, to political radicals outright challenging their claim to national legitimacy. Their presence as rogue elements as American soil is a crime in and of itself. With the stakes clear as day to everyone involved, it's time that we snuff out these extremists and insurrectionists once and for all. We'll present these upstarts with a single demand, stand down and disarm or face military action, we'll prepare for the latter, of course. Crush partisans. Uh, to say that the average American's faith in the democratic system has been somewhat shaken will be likely the understatement of the century. While many people in recently freed areas are more than happy with the side of government troops, the sentiment has unfortunately not been felt as strongly as we had hoped in the other places. With protests in affected areas, commonplace as many among the local population, have loudly voiced their opposition to the Union throughout the war. Be they pro-Trump or nature or even support the radical factions that we have recently liberated territory from, these vocal dissidents have been substantially disrupted through efforts of reintegration with the protests allowing for more subtle acts of resistance that in turn increase the need for garrison troops. The can of these attempts and increased focus in dispersing and stopping out these troublesome individuals will be put forward. Those without loyalty to the Union will no longer have their provocations tolerated in our streets, especially with the fate of American democracy at stake. Joe Biden's health decreases even further. It's obvious to many within the Biden's inner circle that there's something clearly wrong with the state of his health. Pretty normal to know. The immense pressure the Civil War has for quite some time now worn down the Commander-in-Chief's physical and mental ability. Well, once I've been able to more or less deal with the discomfort, the president now found himself to be bedridden with much more than normal. Medical staff aid his movements to ensure he does not have some all fallen cause of fracture. He's constantly hooked up to an IV in order to keep him hydrated. Despite all this, the president remains adamant that he remains present at the various meetings and discussions, even though a good number of his duties have largely been carried out by staffers and the VP Harris in his stead. Uh, while still remaining somewhat active in their decision making, the president's cognitive ability, something that was a question even before the Civil War, albeit mostly based around the tactical opposition, has very obviously faltered tremendously as well. Uh, a number of instances in which Biden has forgotten things previously well known by the, be they names, faces, directions, and so forth, as well as confusion regarding the past discussions and meetings, has been very much noticed by those around him. Rumors on the Capitol and the White House continue to float around, with general atmosphere being a sense of dread for the 46th president. He doesn't have much time left, does he? Nope. And right now, what is he at? What's up, Joe? What would you expect? You ain't going to get younger. Oh, he will die. Oh, crap. we got to finish this war. So, basically, oh, come on. Uh, what happens if we end the war now, then? Because right now, we're doing extremely well. Look, it was the Chinese that had this gigantic air force stopping us. So, you can blame all the Chinese, the PRC, for this. So, we're doing really well. Once the Chinese got rid of their planes and they went back to war with other people over there. Huh. We're doing actually really, 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 really well. So, as you can see, by the map. The, the map painting. So, once you get rid of the Chinese, you're, you're good to go. So we have to win this war basically like right now.
Because I don't want Joe Biden to die because he was the reason why I basically played this campaign. So go. Yeah, without the Chinese here, um, they're doing, we're doing pretty okay. The North Koreans are here. Oh, maybe they came back. Nope. There's nothing Chinese here. We still haven't gotten to war with these guys either, so. Where are you guys at? Where are you guys at? And we made some pretty good encirclements. But, uh. 160 days, eh? Russian base Ukraine, I mean. Kind of what you expect. Expand the CIA. Oh, did I read that one? I I didn't. As the ongoing effort to rewrite dissidents and other potential dangers continue, we may determine that further resources must be allocated to our intelligence branches if we are to adequately maintain and expand our more covert activities. Although they've done an exemplary job thus far with the resources they've been given, the sheer scale of this war has led to clear need for an increased level of financial and operational commitment. In order to maintain superiority in the world of information gathering, the Central Intelligence Agency will be expanded in terms of funding, support, and organizational prowess and efficiency. Secret operations will be actively increased and further connections will be made in order to secure and advance the position of the Union. The agency once will once more remain 10 steps ahead of anyone rearing their heads to strike us in, their t our, in our time of weakness, be they foreign or homegrown. Introduce the public option. The public health care option, or simply the public option, is a proposal that creates a government-run health insurance agency that will compete with the private health insurance companies, despite being struck down in 2010 by Joe Lieberman. Now is your best opportunity to get it passed, especially with the trying times America's facing as a nation. Not only would it make more affordable health insurance for uninsured citizens, we could put pressure on private health insurance companies to lower the premium costs and create more rational profit gaps. I think we should be able to get these guys done within 160 days, but we'll see. We make like no political power for some reason. You have to go in now. Take out Reading. Gen 3 Night Vision. Long time contractors, which is good. Hey, two more. Encircled gone. Good. Keep going, guys. Keep going. You're doing a great job. You're in California now. Looks like another encirclement, maybe ish. Can't believe we went through the entire land option, too. Holy cow. Modern body armor. It's 2226 already. Holy cow. We've been playing this for a long time. Come on. Let's go this way. Go down to San Jose. Lucky Martin facility secured. In recent offensive, our ground force were able to capture Lucky Martin facility. Our diamonds in the air will be sure quickly to the skies. NATO intervenes in... Oh, they actually intervene. The war escalates. War between Europeans. A war between Europeans is a civil war. I mean, yeah. If you start that, you got to finish them off. Going a little slower in the, the desert states. But we lost the facility. Come on. Go around them. Introduce the public option. Oh, we can't do this one either. Oh. Well, we're going to do this one anyways, whatever. Wait, so to do this, this automatically takes out 150 political power. This is broken as hell. That's stupid. That's really stupid. Um, Revitalize the Affordable Care Act. Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, whereas remaining, the most prominent overhaul to nation's health coverage in decades, has been shown to be woefully inadequate in the face of a war's effect on the populace. With more and more people undergoing physical and phys psychological harm each day as a result of the fighting, Overtures must be made to the existing healthcare coverage if we're to adequately address the health needs of our populace in the face of a collapsed economy and nation. We must adopt or adapt if we were to ever ensure that no American will ever be left destitute as a result of their sustained injuries either during or after this war's conclusion. So the game wasted 300 political power, which is complete crap. We need to maintain a stockpile of 150 no matter what, which is dumb. There you go. Now we got back there. Good. Finish them off. How many more days we got for Joe? 120, okay. Good. You, you just gotta finish them off. Come on. Finish them off. Embargoed. Out of Kiev, the war escalates. Go to Los Angeles. Go. 
out of Odessa go get here. Oh, there goes Navajo. I'm completely ignoring that front. Storms of Vilnius. What is that? Oh, there goes those guys. There you go. Nice job. Nice job. Get here. Get here. What the hell are you doing? Get here. <sighs> Jesus. I guess we're going to go Hollywood. Public defense. Ink. Nice. Dum bum. There you go. Hundred and one days. We should be able to get that. That's fine. Uh, great socialist people's Arab Jamahiria. Pop Republic of Central Africa. Gaddafism. And Russia's just taking everybody out. Sounds about right. Ah, oh, we got the separate again. Good. Shut up, protect us just a wee bit. How have you guys been doing? I'm sure you guys are pretty depleted at this point. Very surprised that the Autumn Boffin Division has not gone to war with us. Get off those are nice. But I didn't care. So many Americans struggle with medical debt, lack of access, or untreated conditions. Now, so much of our country a wreck, and so many Americans dying, suffering from diseases long thought eradicated, as easily accessible, affordable, and quality healthcare is more necess necessary than ever. Our assumptions of how healthcare policy should be formulated are no longer adequate. We need much more than we've had in the past, even the Affordable Care Act. The cornerstone piece of legislation, the Obama Biden agenda, no longer suffices. What we need is a healthcare system that works for all Americans, no matter their age or pre existing condition and can deal with the myriad of challenges facing the American people today. This new healthcare will be centered around the patient, not the pharmaceutical, pay pharmaceutical payouts. It'll be affordable, truly affordable, not just giving insurance companies free customers. We don't have to compromise here. These are extraordinary times and the call for desperate measures. Frankly, our Republican friends are in no position to stop us. We can do what the Ob Ob Biden, Obama, I'm sorry, Ob Ob Obama, Biden administration originally intended. Barack Obama and I, uh, mm. oh boy. Uh, I guess pass the PRO Act. Uh, protecting the Right to Organize Act, or PRO Act, as a law that would amend the National Labor Relations Act for the purpose of expanding various labor protections related to employees' rights to organize and collectively bargain in the workplace. It would prevent employers from counteracting labor organization and strengthen the right of employees to join a union. This bill should be passed as soon as possible to win over the trust and support of the working class within our territories and begin a new era for American capitalism, one that protects the rights of the workers. Oh my god, how much longer do we have to... Frickin' wait. Did they bring back the Chinese? I hope they're at war. They should still be at war. I'm surprised the North Koreans haven't gotten a war yet either. I mean how late this is? It's 22, 26 already. Let's put ink. Antipartisan. God, you know you hate California. It's lasting forever. How about we uh, do this, and the rest of you like hold them here, so they can't move? That'd be great, you know. Look at that. Split them in two. Look, and then circumvent as well. Where's the capital now? <laughs> Hello? Also, if Joe Biden dies before we unify the nation, which we still got to take an Adenbaufen uh, division too. Uh, I'm just going <laughs> to replay this again, which is kind of dumb. But, you know, like, how how can you actually win this? Like, I know some people have, but this is really freaking difficult. Like, at this point, it's fine. But, like, earlier on, you can't win against Trump. Not that fast. And why can't we just go to war with these guys too? Like, this makes no sense why we can't go to war with these guys. Alright, so at this point, you guys are doing this. You are a solid front line here. I'm going to throw all 23 divisions here as well. To make sure you're solid. You guys are okay. I'm going to throw you over here. You guys have done a great job. 
Uh huh. You guys are gonna come here. Uh huh. Hello. Come on. The war's over. So, war tax has been removed. Do we never get the American South again or something here? Or. Oh, now we can get this. Can we win? How fast do we have? Take some days, we probably can win. We're gonna save real quick. is over. You know what? We're just going to reintegrate all these different places to update your Screw that other focus for now. I'm going to give us... I'm going to use console commands anyways um, since I, it doesn't make sense why we shouldn't because the game cheated us out of 300 political power. So... It's fine. Pass the pro act. I heard this one last time. So if you're doing this one, please go ahead. Boop. Oh! Looks like NATO fell apart. Got to crack out. Russia is victorious in Europe. Slava Rossi. Good job, guys. Now we're gonna fight a bunch of frickin' Nazis here. And then in the next episode, we'll see what happens. It'd be kind of a... Last, look at that. Of Malo Rossiya. Federal Republic of Novo Rossiya. Well, they won. But at what cost? People's Republic of Pol Pe Polish People's Republic, City of Galicia. Huh. All right. I don't understand why you have to wait 14 days. That makes literally no sense to me. How strong are they? They can't be that strong. Heralds of the. Oh my God. They have a crap ton of attack and defense. Industri industrial industrial anarchy doctrine of destruction because of despair oh. Saying too bad. Reunify America. Strategic destruction. We have that one done. Well, we will eventually. Abolish Electoral College. Oh, God. Well, we're going to need some help for the National Co Unity Coalition. The Grand Old Party, while largely having shown the true colors by fleeing to the traitor in Denver, has not entirely gone down the road of trees in D.C. A sizable portion of moderate Republicans and conservatives have made the wise choice of remaining with the Union. Due to their predicament, they have grown considerably less hostile to opposing legislation, having seemingly opened themselves up to co cooperation in the names of preserving the legitimate government and Congress. While many may balk at the notion of making any sort of effort to appease or otherwise make gestures to what is left of the Republican Party, we cannot allow the ones who have remained with us to be left in the dark. Making some overtures to the conservatives will help ensure that they remain loyal to us, as well as giving the more conservative portion to the population a reassurance that their voices are heard, so long as those voices remain loyal to our government. It may be wise to make a more conservative outlook if it means less opposition for the more right wing elements among the populace. We're done for now. Palmetto State Armory secured? Oh, great. To Orlando, my friends. Move Orlando. Great. Don't let him move. Do not let them move. Miami, yes. Wilmington was their capital, but now they're gone too. Now they're fully destroyed. For now what? Is Joe Biden still going to die? I mean, the war is over now.
The war's over. Oh, reunify America. There we go. It was the evening for President Biden. <clears throat> the eyes of liberation was on the verge of finally ending this trinity of sorrow that he had faced. No, what America had faced. He championed himself not on the basis of his own presence as a person, but one bounded by the love of people, of the American people. Sure, multiple blows struck the very core of the man tied together by struggle, but he knew. Once you get knocked out, you had to get up again. He slowly got up out of the need to truly see what he had sought for his entire presidency, walking to the echelon of the Truman Balcony, watching as the sun shimmered under the heart of the Americans going back to work or simply enjoying the moment. In the midst of it, he took up the Ulysses by James Joyce, an inspiration to him in the personal copy that he got through that got him to this very hell in the first half and read, You can't bring back time, like holding water in your hands, signaling that although there will be no going back, you will ensure America shall be a nation once more. The soul of the nation has been saved. Demobilize. Ease of conscription. This we reunified America. And then what do we have next? Planning for democracy. Oh, we have even more down here. So we got a lot to do here. Reconstruction progress. Holy crap. Oh, don't tell me about political power. So we've got that to do. We'll get the, hopefully, the conservatives back to join, but we'll see. They might just leave immediately. We'll see. Um, we need more congressional support. So that's something we'll be fighting for the entire time. Supercharged war machine. The final battle for American democracy is coming. We must divert everything to the war economy. Assuring the victory over the snakes in Denver, which we technically already have. Uh, aerial discipline. From the initial outbreak of the Civil War, the USA, USAF has been in a state of haphazardness due to the chaos that came with the collapse. Though much more loyal than some parts of the military, the influx of new personnel and the overall disorganization that had originally permeated the armed forces was still present in the way they carried out operational tasks. As the recent efforts to smooth out more definitive aerial tactics have begun to pay off, let us translate that into a renewed sense of discipline for the bird eye defenders of the freedoms. Drill will be tightened, coordination will be enhanced, formations will be perfected, and our piles will once again operate with ironclad efficiency against the enemies of democracy with frightening pre precision. The Union victorious in the Second American Civil War. And the beauty lie the lilies, Christ was born across the sea. Where the glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me, as he died to make men holy, let die to make men free. While God is marching on, are the words sung across America today as the final death blows against the traitorous echelons nationwide as finally succumbed to the liberation struggle, with that being a truly free America. President Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., who was once doubted as he took the footsteps to an, of an ill and wounded America, said to be a simple figure at a person of pure division, proved everyone who once miscalculated his endeavors to be wrong, as he reunified the nation by his bare hands, containing the pain and sorrow all Americans came to be linked with, yet he understood the hell the very day unification cast his grace on the nation. Now like Lincoln or Roosevelt, he was given the duty to truly reshape and transform America into a machine of glory no longer poisoned by fear and hatred in its image. We'll keep the faith in advance as one. Look at that. For too long in this society, we have celebrated unrestrained individualism over common community. It's time for unity. We actually have Doc here. Look at that. Is he still going to die? Battle for America has been removed. You aren't going to get younger. The remnants of Lincolnism. I want to thank the staff of the Bulwark, dispatching those in the Abraham Lincoln Project for having me here. Knowing that some conservatives haven't lost their darn minds yet is concern it's comforting. I'll tell you, that I remember about politics was for most of my career. Men like the late great William F. Buckley, the brilliant Gene uh, Kirkpatrick, the President's Bush, conservatives all, yet deeply committed to the fight for democracy at home and abroad. I look at what's become the Republican Party, my heart sinks. A real institution that has been with us since Lincoln has sunk into the depths of authoritarian, anti-democratic depravity, likes which a country has never seen. I look at everyone here and I feel a whole lot better. I see men like former House Speaker Ryan, Senators McConnell and Corn, and words for democracy like Jen Psaki and David French. I know the legacy of Lincoln, Eisenhower, and Reagan lives on in you, and I fully suspect that when they are liberated from the illegitimate occupation, the voters will reward a reformed Republican Party with a seat at the table on the rebellion the United States, because we need to teach non combative dissent in America. So, does he still die? Activate the mission. Down the rabbit hole. That is stupid. We're done with the war. I guess he can go out with people knowing, like, oh, he's really great and whatnot, but still. We literally can't do anything else here. Oh, maybe uh, restore the soul of the nation? I don't want to do that one. When the Civil War began, a significant portion of the Republican senators and congressmen threw their lot in with the illegitimate government in Denver, showcasing to the country their treachery and lapsed commitments to the democratic process in favor of an egomaniac. Do consider the sensible Republicans, the ones who made the right choice in recognizing their legitimacy as a true American government, to ever be able to recover their image among the Union's populace, even if they remain on the right side of history in the end. Despite their hardships, however, the Union's GOP has put forth a great effort to rebuild their image effectively rebanding themselves against the stigma surrounding Donald Trump's gaggle traitors and their hostility towards democracy. The new Republican Party, it seems, has taken a new turn, a turn to finding themselves not as populistic demagogues but sensible and strong-headed social conservatives, soulful and patriotic in defense of their love for democracy and the Constitution, while simultaneously being willing to compromise with their opposition for the greater good of the country. 
which much, much thanks to the President's efforts, it appears that America's soul has been reforged in the sense of passion, re reason, and a love for one's country, envisioned by the truly legitimate and rehabilitated Republican Party. I necessarily want that, though. Like, this whole thing, dealing with political power, sucks. I might do this again, just so we can do this, so make sure he might die anyways in the end, which would really suck. But that's not our fault. Like, this is my first time ever doing this and understanding what's going on. Do we lose? We lost our divisions. Okay, that makes sense. Um, that being said, I'm probably going to do this again. Off screen. Uh -huh. And congressional season. we got to make sure we get a congressional support. We can lower the support and get more liberal support. But the game has been jipping us, so. What is this? We're going to upstate New York. That'd be nice, so. Um, other than that. Oh, demobilize are coming. Oh, god dang it. That's dumb. If you enjoyed the video though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Uh, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow, as we'll probably end the campaign and make sure we're really ready for uh, everything that'll happen. Thanks for watching, and have a great, great rest of your day.